everyone and welcome back to my channel Fall the Fall Show. I'm Carrie and today we are going to be going on a figure collection tour that my husband Max and I have been collecting for over the past six years or so. It has been a challenge to find out where to put all of our figures because we never expected to have as many as we do and over the years they have just slowly crept into our living room which we don't really recommend unless you plan on having your living room space be weeptastic or you know you can get more cabinets to keep things organized because figures can really clash with more everyday decor. So here I am at our media cabinet which is full of our video games and our Blu-rays and on either side of the media cabinet my husband has quickly built two prototype wooden boxes for our figures. That's why they're ugly and have glue all over them. His words, not mine. In the future, he is going to stain them cherry red. That way they match our media cabinet. Okay, so let's get started with the figure tour. Okay, so to start off the tour, we are going to be starting on the left side of the media cabinet with two pretty epic first four figures. So here we have Sif, the Great Grey Wolf by First Four Figures. It's really detailed as you can see, but it was hard to find a place to display since Sif's sword is so large. The statue has Sif sitting on the grave of its master, Artorias, who we aptly placed underneath this statue since he is then under his own gravestone. This is the exclusive version of this figure, so it has real metal swords stabbed into it to represent fallen warriors who fought against Sif and a wolf ring from the game that you can wear. Next we have Artorias the Abyss Walker statue from First Four Figures, who is also from Dark Souls. This is also an exclusive edition that comes with another sword he can hold, but my husband prefers to have the Great Sword of Artorias equipped, that way it matches the sword Sif is using to defend the grave. Even without knowing anything about these figures, they're very medieval and European looking. So a lot of our guests that come over always enjoy these two the most since they don't need to know where they are from. And then moving on to the middle of the media cabinet, we have four more first four figures. Here we have Mugen from Samurai Champloo from First Four Figures. Samurai Champloo is one of our favorite animes, so it was hard to pass up on getting a Mugen statue. They have him in a very dynamic pose with lots of metal swords and arrows. This figure is a little scary to move around because he is only supported by his one arm attached to the base, and you can see it wiggle a bit if it is disturbed. He does have an alternative head displaying a more neutral face, but we think the face that we have on now matches the pose better. Next we have Spyro from Spyro the Dragon. This is another first four figure exclusive edition with the light up flame base. He also came with a little treasure box full of gems that we have sitting under Spyro as if he is defending them. Next we have True Forminda from Twilight Princess. Spoilers, sorry guys, she isn't a little imp creature. This is the exclusive version from First Four Figures with glowing hair and glow-in-the-dark paint. Exclusive is usually the highest edition from First Four Figures. But this figure has a definitive edition, which puts her in an acrylic display case with eight black light spotlights. Other than that, the versions are relatively the same, but the black lights would be handy because they would certainly help show off her glow-in-the-dark patterns.
Next, we have Spike from Cowboy Bebop. This is the exclusive version from First Four Figures that includes another arm pose option. We have him doing the finger pistol pose since it's from an iconic scene in the anime. The other option is just him with a real gun in hand instead. And then to finish off this side of the room, we have the last of the first four figures over here. Next we have the exclusive version of Majora's Mask from First Four Figures. This is one of my husband's favorite figures. This one has two lighting modes. It has a pulsing glow or a solid glow. The pulsing glow option is a very nice touch since it adds to the creepy nature of the mask. And next we have Saitama from One Punch Man. This is also a First Four Figures exclusive edition. They have him in a very cool pose, especially with the cape flowing in the back. The exclusive edition also has the option to switch his head to the famous expressionless Saitama. All right, so now we are in the corner of the living room. Ignore this over here that used to hold video games. It doesn't anymore because we have too many. But starting off on this shelf, we have quite a couple of Dragon Ball C figures. And something pretty unique about them is that they all stand up on their own without any kind of face. All of these Dragon Ball figures are by Ban Presto. On the far right, we have one of the Super Master Stars piece of Goku called Two Dimensions, which is number four in that series of figures and has a cool, cel-shaded look to it. And next we have Super Saiyan Vegeta, Super Saiyan Vegito, Super Saiyan Goku, Normal Goku, and finally another Super Master Stars piece of Super Saiyan Goku, number one in the series, The Brush. My husband wishes he got number two, the original, instead. Sad. And now we are moving on to the Entertainment Center, which also has a few of our figures, as well as some slimes from Dragon Quest, because what is life without slimes? Next up, from one of my husband's favorite video games, we have Fize from Skies of Arcadia. This was his first First Four figure ever, and frankly seems a bit smaller than what they make these days. He has his main default sword in hand and is holding his flag for the pirate group, the Blue Rogues. The flag is made of real fabric, which is a very nice touch. And finally, we have Link on the King of Red Lions from The Legend of Zelda, Wind Waker. Another first four figure exclusive version with a light up wave effect. This is one of my husband's favorite Zelda games, so he had to get it. Once again, a real fabric flag and just an overall awesome figure. and tool room where our figures have also crept into. Ignore the ugly curtain, I didn't plan for this. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to say. <laughs> so over here is the first bookcase, which has quite a few figures as well as some plushies on top. So first we have this beautiful Miku from Folkaloid in her Harvest Moon design by Good Smile. 
She's dressed in an attire that is based on the mid-autumn festival in China. I got her recently and I absolutely love her. The only thing that I dislike about this figure is that she was difficult to get on the base because you can't really see what you're doing as you try to place her on. Yeah. I do hope that we can see more traditional dress figures of Miku in the future, not just limited to hanfus and kimonos. I would love to see Miku in something like an extravagant ball gown or something of the like in the future as well. And next to her is a Kaito prize figure. This I received from a friend. It is a Project Diva Sega prize figure, so if you're looking to collect all of the Krypton characters, prize figures are a good alternative because not only are they more affordable, but all Krypton characters are available, that way you can have all six in your collection. Right below we have Coco from Witch Hat Atelier by Kotobukiya. This is currently a manga-only series that I am sure will get an anime adaption because of how well it's doing and how popular it is. I mean, there are two figures of Coco already. So this here is based off the mangaka's artwork. I believe it's from a splash page illustration in the manga. I just love the spherical design of this figure. It feels very cozy and like she just belongs in front of a library. Last on this bookcase is a Project Diva Miku figure by Sega. So this is the Dark Angel module from the song Secret Police. Something unique about this Miku figure is that she has twin drills, which isn't something she is designed with a lot, so it's a nice variation to her hair. And then the last bookshelf in this room also has uh, quite a bit of plushies on top. That's basically a little Sanrio shrine up there. And then it's, it's basically dominated by folkloid figures and manga, mainly shoujo manga in this room. First is a scale of Vintage Dress Miku by Max Factory from the song Romeo and Cinderella. Project Diva gets a lot of prize figures, but not a lot of scale figures. But when a scale is released, it is absolutely gorgeous and unfortunately quite expensive at the aftermarket price, so I'm very glad that I got this one on pre-order. Right next to her is the Infinity Miku by Sega from the song The Intense Singing of Hatsune Miku. This is one of my favorite prize Mikus that I really wish is a scale because this is one of my favorite Miku designs. But I mean, come on. She's too, she's, she's too glorious to be just a prize figure. She deserves a scale. Right below we have two scales and one prize figure. So first up is Nekomura Iroha by Griffin Enterprises. She is a Hello Kitty themed Focalite by AH Software. She is quite tiny and smaller than I thought she would be, especially since there's so much detail to her design. But the Hello Kitty base here was a fantastic touch. But my husband hates her because she has speakers for hands and that creeps him out. She does have a Kitty Lair design figure as well where she is holding a Hello Kitty umbrella where she has normal hands. So I'm looking for that one, but it is difficult to find. In the middle here is Luca in her Amora attire by Sega from the song Acute. I love this dress so much, but I don't plan on picking up Miku and Kaito though, because while I love this song and I love the Project Diva adaption, the other adaptions are just a mess. Sometimes Focaloid songs should just stay songs. Next is Lily by Fat Company. She has a focal light by Internet Co. She's not a very stable figure, unfortunately. And like Iroha, she is smaller than what I expected. And I did think the quality would be a bit better, but it's the only scale figure of Lily that exists, as every other figure of her is a prize figure. Why? I just wish that this figure was a bit more stable. The last figures in this room are these three Miku prize figures by Sega. So we have Ribbon Girl, Breath You, and Bioretta. So the Ribbon Girl design here isn't really used specifically for any Miku song in the games, but she has been featured in the Miku concerts, where she and Kaito are singing Ohedo Julia Night. And I just love the color scheme of this figure. It's so colorful, so pink, so teal. Next to her is the Miku from Two Breaths Walking. The figure box officially listed as Breath You, but it is also called Bless You as well as Breathe With You. Breathe With You makes more sense as a name, since the song is called Two Breaths Walking, but... Uh, 
It's a nicely designed figure and I love the different hues on the design. And last here is Miku from Cat Food and the Pierrette design. It's meant to be a combo of a circus theme as well as a cat appearance here with her hood. She's just such a fun and inspiring design. I love this figure so much. Okay, so now we are in the bedroom where the figures originally started before they crept into other areas of the house. So starting off with this bookcase, which used to be dominated by manga, but now it has been conquered by figures, as well as some acrylic stands, and also some keychains. We have some dot hack keychains right here of Haseo and Kite. First up is basically the figure that started it all for me, and that is Armin from Attack on Titan by Sentinel. Before Armin, I think I had one Android figure, and I told myself I would never get sucked into figure collecting because it is such a money pit. I found him at Anime Expo, I think around the time he was released, and was just so shocked that an Armin figure existed, because figures really only existed for Levi, Aaron, and Mikasa. So when I saw him and saw that it was actually a good looking figure, I bought him instantly. He does have an alternative face and pose, but I always keep him in this pose because I love it best and he was hard to put together. The only other scales that I would like of Tech on Titan unfortunately don't exist, but I would love to have an Annie scale figure someday and a post time skip Eren if they ever make them. Next is the Factory Tyrant Miku from Sadistic Music Factory by Sega. I would like to have all of the Project Diva prize figures together once I have a better setup, but for now she just chills up here with Armin. And right between them is Switzerland and Liechtenstein from Hitalia. They can be keychains as well, but I have them in their acrylic stand form. On the next shelf here, I have the complete set of the Winter Life Band of Rin, Miku, and Len. These are by Taito, and there are alternative versions of them. So in total, Miku has three different versions, and Rin and Len have two versions each. I just love their facial expressions, and I love having the full set. On the next shelf are some acrylic stands from the Dot Hack series. These are the 15th anniversary editions with Atelier, Haseo, Kite, and Black Rose. Here we have two smaller figures of Amaterasu from Okami. Both are called Define Descent, but one has the Kusanagi sword and the other has the Define Retribution default weapon. These are 9 inch PVC statues. They later announced a 1 4 scale of the same model in resin, which is kind of annoying that they do that. Lastly, we have another Miku Project Diva prize figure. This is the cabin attendant from the song Tricolor Airline. And behind her, we have a little Inosuke from Demon Slayer, as well as Juzo from Tokyo Ghoul. So moving on to this little intermediate area here, we have some Agretzko acrylic stands that I got from the Sanrio store in Little Tokyo, Los Angeles. And then moving on to this awesome Legend of Zelda shelf over here, we have some amazing Zelda figures. My husband custom made this shelf for these figures, but messed up on his dado joints and didn't cover them up yet. Sorry. On the top we have Link from Twilight Princess. This is by Dark Horse and Together Plus, and it's not really very good, but at the time it was all we could get. Next up, we have a fantastic figure of Link by Good Smile. This is the Skyward Sword Link, and we really love the paint job on it. Next up, we have Link from Breath of the Wild by First Four Figures. This is another one of their smaller PVC figures that they come out with. Unfortunately, once again, they announced a new version of this figure a year later that has lighting effects that we would have bought in the first place. And finally, we have Zelda from Breath of the Wild. 
this one they actually released with lighting effects from the start. So this one glows. Her face and even her little chic is slate in her hand glow and it's just, it's very cool. This right here is not figure related, it's just a really awesome switch case, which is also Legend of Zelda. Okay, so now we are moving on to my husband's Detolf, which has quite a bit of shonen to it. Okay, so moving on, we have a statue by MRC, which we believe they call the Five Saiyans. There is a logo that usually fits onto the bottom of the base that says MRC, but we left that in the box, cause aesthetics. My husband has always been iffy on this statue. It's cool, but the coloring sometimes looks a little odd. Anyhow, on the top right, we have adult Gohan. Top left, we have Vegeta. Bottom middle, we have Goku. Bottom right, we have Goten. And finally, bottom left, we have Kid Trunks. All right, so moving on to my husband's Detolf. On the first shelf is our Togashi shelf. On the left side, we have Yu Yu Hakusho figures by Kotobukiya. And on the right side, we have Hunter x Hunter figures by Mega House. The silver haired man in the back is Yoko from Yu Yu Hakusho. And next to him is Hisoka from Hunter x Hunter. Yu Yu Hakusho is a favorite of ours, so my husband was determined to get all of these figures as well as all of the ones from Hunter x Hunter as both are amazing works of art. So here we have Kurama and Hiei. As well as Kuwabara and Yusuke. Luckily we got Kuwabara on a re-release because his aftermarket price before then was quite insane. Next we have Gone and Killua from Hunter x Hunter. We absolutely love this set, I just really wish there was a Kurapika and Leorio figure to match them as they are also part of the main cast, and Kurapika is a personal favorite of mine so I would love to have a scale of him one day. On the next shelf, we have a mixture of Tails figures. All of these are made by Alter, except one. These are all characters from my husband's favorite Tails games. Starting in the back left, we have Yuri Lowell, and next to him is Raven. Both of these guys are from Tales of Vesperia. Next on the bottom right we have Cellos and Lloyd from the first Tales of Symphonia. On the bottom of this shelf we have Luke from Tales of the Abyss, and next to Luke we have Tyr also from Tales of the Abyss and her brand is Kotobukiya.
Moving on down, we have Lelouch in the back standing next to C2. This Lelouch was thankfully a re-release by Mega House because we missed his original run, and this C2 is made by Union Creative that came out shortly after Lelouch's re-release. On the bottom right here, we have Haseo in his Terror of Death form from Dothack GU. This is basically the only real figure that you can get of Haseo. And next to Haseo, we have Kenshin from Aroni Kenshin. This figure was made by Mega House. For this figure, he's in his Botosai outfit. There is another version of this figure where he's in his red outfit after he had retired from being the Botosai. On the bottom, we just threw in a lot of amiibos. Didn't really have a place for them! So next we have another really big shelf. It's from Ikea. It holds a lot of our first four figures because they are, I mean, they're huge. So starting off from the top, we have Modern Sonic the Hedgehog from First Four Figures. This is the exclusive version with the light up foot flames. And no, we are not into the fandom. We just like Sonic. Below Sonic, we have Jack and Daxter from the original Jack and Daxter. One of my husband's favorite platformer games. This is a statue from Gaming Heads. Continuing down, we have Amaterasu from Okami. This is a first four figure exclusive with the light of Defying Retribution. There's a little Isun that sits on top of her weapon, but he falls off easily so we keep him off. Below Amaterasu, we have Shiranui, Amaterasu's predecessor from Okami. Shiranui has the final reflector weapon equipped called Solar Flare. First Four Figures puts lights underneath the glowy tendrils of light, but unfortunately the light doesn't pass through them very well. They also glow in the dark, but that's hard to see in action. Okay, so now we're at this bottom shelf here, which has quite a few figures on it. There's Patrick. Patrick is a figure. What are you talking about? So my husband broke his personal rule of duplicate characters at the very bottom here, as he has Hiei, Kurama, and Yoko in sitting poses by Union Creative. Here we have Ace from One Piece by Bandai. He is very difficult to dust. If you see dust on him, I'm sorry, I tried. Last, we have a Link Figma from Skyward Sword by Good Smile and Max Factory. We're not huge fans of Figmas, but this Link has a lot of different pose options and expressions. These are not figures. I just, I don't know where to put plushies, which is why I try not to collect them, but I have quite a few from Pokemon, Senbon Sakura, and then as well, some Seven Deadly Sins Hawk because Hawk is just cute and so fun, and also he helps support the other ones. So last, we have my Detolf. 
which has been semi-conquered by my husband's dragons up here. So yeah, here's my Detolf. It's mainly conquered by Focaloid figures. For this Detolf, originally it was going to be lit like my husband's, but um, it wasn't quite dusted first as it needed to be. And the stickiness, um, well, basically it didn't work. So my Detolf is just not lit up like his, at least for now. Maybe in the future we'll get a better light setup for them. First, we have Rafflelos from Monster Hunter by Capcom. And this is Alduin from Skyrim that came with the Skyrim's Collector Edition. It's very hollow and not a very serious figure, but it still looks pretty cool. So here's a figure that is too big to share a shelf with anyone, so instead she's sharing the top shelf with two dragons. That is Romilia Scarlet from the fan-made Castlevania-esque Toho game called Legend of the Scarlet Devil Castle Scarlet Symphony. I actually never planned on getting a Toho figure until this one came out as the detail on it is impeccable. This is an amazing figure by Kyusuke as Romilia looks beautifully sinister. I also recently found out that Sakuya has a figure now from the same series and I am very tempted. Opening the Detolf here, we have an arm and keychain just guarding everyone. The first shelf here is this beautiful Focalite set. These are the Hanai Rogoromo designs of Meiko, Kaito, Miku, Rin, Len, and Luca. I am so happy that I bought all of these on pre-order as they came out because the aftermarket prices on these are a nightmare. This is such a beautiful set by Stronger and the backdrop here is from Miku's box as her box was the biggest. Naturally because of her hair of course. The backdrop works wonderfully for setting a spring ambiance for this set. And something that I absolutely love is that Len here can be on his own stand, or he can be paired with Rin, and of course I'm gonna put them together. It's totally not because he literally would not fit on the shelf if he was on his own stand. Next is another favorite set of mine and the first Focaloid figures I bought, and that is the Tony versions of the default outfits of Miku, Rin Len, and Luca by Max Factory. I bought Luca and Miku first, and I never expected Rin and Len to get their own figures, but then they did, and of course they were once again made to be paired together on this beautiful piano bass. I love paired sets like this and the Hanai Rogoromo ones because I love Rin and Len and the extra detail that they add to their figures. Altogether though, I love looking at this set because this group was one of the first cosplay groups that my friend Oz, Cheshire, SWP, and I cosplayed, so it reminds me a lot of that and of course I love these characters. Next is more Focaloid and some Pokemon. So I have Rosa and Hilda from Pokemon Black and White and Black and White 2. These were the games that got me back into Pokemon and I love both games so much. I'm very excited that a scale figure of N was announced and sometime this year he will finally be joining these girls. Aside from them, I have Lyra from Heart Gold and Soul Silver. These girls are my favorite female trainers and while I do wish I could afford all of the female trainers by Kotobukiya, I'm really happy that I have these three at least. I am hoping to add Leaf from Fire Red and Leaf Green and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire Mate in the future if I can find them. Next is Heart Hunter Miku from Project Diva by Max Factory. This design is a little deceiving because it looks like her hair is very short, but actually her hair is all braided in the back and I'm just so glad that that was kept in the figure design. With gorgeous scales like this, you would think that they would release more Project Diva scales. I mean, look at this! Heart Hunter and Vintage Dress are gorgeous scales and I just wish more Project Diva figures would be released as scale figures like this instead of prize figures. In the middle here is this adorable Sakura Miku Nendroid by Good Smile. She has very many parts and different faceplates. My favorite is of her eating a rice ball. I also just adore the Sakura pattern in her hair because I love Sakura themed items. Last on the shelf is Stardust or Xing Chun. 
She is a Chinese Vocaloid, and her name in English is officially Stardust. This figure is just so beautiful. It is my first figure by Miethos, which is a Chinese figure company. Unfortunately, she is not listed on my figure collection, so it was difficult to hunt her down. And last, there are some prize figures and androids on this last shelf. On the top here, we have Rin and Len from the song Remote Control or Remokan. These are the transmitter and receiver outfits by Sega. I love the plus and minus symbols in their eyes. These are the first Project Diva prize figures that I ever bought. I was really surprised by how tall they were and the quality of these figures. So while I'm not the biggest fan of prize figures, I'm pretty fond of the Sega SPM figures, which is a blessing and a curse. On one hand, I would rather they just all be scale figures, but on the other hand, these are more affordable. Next is a Madoka and Homura prize figure from Puela Magi Madoka Magica by Ban Presto. Madoka was gifted to me by a friend and I bought Homura to match her. They're both really cute. Absolutely no effort was given to their base though, which is a little disappointing. And last here are three Miku Nendroids by Good Smile. This one is the Snow Miku 2014 version. This was also one of the first figures that I bought. Back then there weren't very many Snow Mikus and this was one of my favorite designs. It is her Magical Girl inspired design. She has so many different parts and her box was not the typical Nendroid box. It was designed and presented in a very creative way and it's just a very cute Nendroid. In the middle is this Yukata Natsu Tsubaki version. This was gifted to me from a friend who won her in a cosplay masquerade and this was the first ever Nendroid I owned. She has summer festival accessories and since it's currently summer, she is in the middle of the Nendroids. And last in this tour is this cheeky little devil. This is the Miku Halloween Nendroid. I love the original artwork by Suo, but they only made a Nendroid of this design. They never made a scale of this like I had hoped, but regardless, it is a cute figure with a variety of expressions. My only complaint is that they changed out her staff with a candy cane, which is weird, and I just, I don't understand. There is another Halloween Miku by Union Creative designed by Hirari, but she is ridiculously expensive now and every time I look at her, my husband cringes because he's not the biggest fan of Halloween designs. He's crazy, I know. But marriages are full of compromise and my compromise is if I see her for a deal and buy it, he'll never know until she arrives and then he'll just have to accept her while she's displayed. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this his and her figure collection tour. I hope you enjoyed everything that you saw from the statues to the scales to the slimes. If you enjoyed everything you saw, please make sure to like this video and also subscribe for future videos like this. And yeah, I will see you all in my next video. Bye. Can you record us a B roll over there? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I came too much out. Oh no. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, we're good. in the middle of some B-roll? Hey man. It's a man roll. It's me.